Yeah. And he gets God. Amen? Praise yeah. God. We're going to get right into our Bible study this morning. And then uh, uh, we're looking forward to Brother Lowell Anderson preaching today. It's going to be exciting. Ava, so glad to have you this morning. Yes. Yeah. Amen.
and he begins to have a conversation with her. Now my point is not this conversation, but he begins to talk to her. And there's something in the heart of every being on this planet that wants to know. You want to know, who am I? What is my purpose? Why am I here? Why am I here? He asked this woman, uh, give me a drink. And they start a little conversation back and forth. And you can tell by the answers that she's giving that she's, she's acutely aware that this man is talking about something that she, she has a vague understanding about but really doesn't know much. He gets to this point where he says, um, he kind of tells her her history. Well, the, the man you're with is not your husband, but uh, you've had many husbands. And um, she begins to realize some, there's a dawning on her. This man knows more about life than anybody I've ever met. And as the conversation keeps going, he says, y y you would ask, if you asked of me, I could give you liver rivers of living water that would, that would flow up and they, they, would, they would consume you. They would, you would never have to take another drink if you drank the water that I have to give. And something in her just breaks. He's talking about something beyond this world. Because she drops her water pail and she runs to the city and she says, come see a man that told me all that I ever did. He's got to know the reason we're all here. So the disciples come up and, and they see him talking to this woman and they're kind of looking like, man, what in the world? Jesus, don't you know who she is? Man, what kind of woman? Good night. One of us should have stayed here with Jesus so we wouldn't have to talk to that lady. And uh, they, they get a little indignant. And, and, and that's when he gets into this dialogue about a field of labor. You see, we didn't come here to win the saved. That's right. That's right. We didn't come here to reach those that are doing well. Right. I, I gave my burden a little bit yesterday at, at Bible study. And, and I don't want to preach this morning. I'm going to leave that to Lowell. So I, I, I'm, I'm feeling a little nudge, but I'm, I'm holding back. Because I feel like I could unload. But there has to be something in us that we see life in the framework of, of God's Word and we understand there's more to life than what we see today. There's more to life than the job you're working, than the education you're trying to get, than the, than the direction you're going in your car after lunch where you're going to go eat. There's more to life than the, than the complications you're having in relationships. There's more to life than what you see today. We live in the moment. And so we have a hard time seeing the big picture of what God is doing. But Jesus draws this down and, and he, he, he says something that's unique and, and something that for me is challenging. He said, I sent you to reap whereon you bestowed no labor. I did not die for you. Jesus did that. I can't forgive your sin. Jesus does that. Right. I, can't, I can't heal your broken heart, but Jesus can do that. Right. All these things that Jesus has done for me, I know I've been there. I've been there. I've had physical dis disabilities in my life that, that, that I had a stroke and I woke up paralyzed on one side of my body. I know what it's like to be in a place where you have no idea what to do. Right. But when you have God in your life, you automatically have an answer. Just like Job, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. It doesn't really matter what happens to you because when you're in God's hands, you're in God's plan, you understand that everything's happening for his purpose and his reason, then it all makes sense. I don't need to know what God knows. I just need to trust that he knows best. Amen? So I'm put on this planet. Why? Is it just to have a good life, to enjoy some... Things uh, is it here? Am I here just to suffer? Am I here to to go through the tragedy of life? No, I'm here to reap what somebody else has sowed. Friend, you're sitting next to somebody that God has been speaking into their heart. I don't know about you, but, but we sometimes think you, it's unique that I think about God. Am I the only one? That about God. No, friend, everybody in the world wakes up wondering, is there a God? What is my purpose? 
what's the meaning of life? We, we have ed educated people, no offense, I love education, but they, they, they put out all this stuff about the, the meaning of life is, you know, we were an amoeba and we had some kind of chemical reaction and here we are millions of years later and your purpose is just to make this uh, whatever we're doing here last a little longer by saving the planet, saving the environment, saving all... No, friend, that, that's, that gives you no hope because all you have is just this brief moment of time living here. And if that's all you have, you have no hope. There is no tomorrow. But when you understand what Jesus said, friend, you're here for a purpose. I don't need to save the planet. That's not my job. I don't need to build a big kingdom for myself. It'll never last. I don't need to try to do great things for people. I, 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 there's only so much of me I can do. I am here to do one thing. To preach this gospel. I am here to reap a harvest that God has already planted. I am here to reach souls that are broken. Let me tell you, the greatest thing you can do for somebody is bring them to an altar and they find Jesus or Jesus reveals himself to them. And he changes their heart in a moment. And they went from somebody with no purpose to no understanding. All these questions of why. And now I have a reason to live. I have a purpose in life. I understand the great mysteries. God does everything for us so that we can understand who he is. Your job is to tell other people. The gospel is the good news. It's the good news of the kingdom. It's the good news of what God did for you. You know what the most powerful thing you own is? Your testimony. A man with an argument is not at the mercy of a man with a testimony. You can tell me why God doesn't exist. Well, friend, he's already done too much for me. You can tell me there is no spirit of God.
always say it'd be easy. I, I managed some people at work. It'd always be, I said, it'd be so easy to run a company if we didn't have employees. <laughs> but then I realized something. God loves people. This is His church. He's going to add to it and take from it as He plans, as He desires. Because He has a plan for this church, for these people, for you individually. You're not out on a limb this morning, friend. You are, a, you are a designed person that God has intimately revealed Himself to. And, and the reason prayer is so important is because every day you pray, you see what God does in your life. He's constantly reminding you of His goodness, reminding you of His greatness, reminding you that He can do anything. Yes. I need that every day. I forget sometimes. I, I see a bad thing coming. I get a bill in the mail or, you know, my tires go flat on my car. I'm like, God, I don't know how to pay for that. Friend, that's what prayer's for. Right. I go to Jesus. He's, he's my source and my supply. And when I begin to have that revelation come to me, then I am being built into a child of God that can go out and produce children of God. Why? Because I can tell them what God done for me. And if He's done it for me, He'll do it for you. Yeah. Just spend 12 months working with one person. 
Getting them prayed through the Holy Ghost. Getting them baptized in Jesus' name. Letting their lives be changed by the Spirit of God. Just one person. And we have to build another building. It's important for you to understand the most important thing there is in life is the calling of God and the preaching of His Word. I am not the only minister in this church. I'm looking at a group of ministers right here sitting in the chair. You say, well, I don't preach, Brother Rowe. Well, you don't have to, but you can read. You can open up your Word. You can give your testimony of what God has done for you. How He's changed your life and made you brand new. Open doors. You can give your testimony and give life to somebody. I've sat many times with people broken hearted. Uh, you, you've met a lot of these people. This is the infamous Lowell Anderson I always talk about, about the, the young man I wanted to baptize and hold him down until no more bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> but now he's a tremendous man of God. Why? Because God is interested in people. He's interested in your good and your bad. He, he's proud when you when you do something wonderful for him. And he's got plenty of his blood when you mess up. You just pray to him and say, God, I'm going to take this to the altar. I need some more blood. And that sacrifice of Calvary comes and washes over you. And all the wrong that you ever did. Don't think that God has a memory. See, we have memory. Somebody done me wrong, I look at it for about 10 years. Wait for them to do something else. What are you doing, Brother Morella? I'm guarding myself against her. God's not like that. Right. God don't remember. The minute you ask for forgiveness, He don't remember. God, remember when I failed? No. No, I don't. It's in, under the blood. It's blotted out. It's, it, there's no remembrance of it made. And when God, when God gives that to you and you have that ability, to, I, I've sat with, with drug addicts. I, you met Brad Oban. He was strung out on meth. And I told him God could forgive everything he ever did. When he came to the church, went down the altar, got filled with the Holy Ghost, he ran outside and laid on his black and just looked at all the stars, thinking, wow, God is so powerful. He's so incredible. Yes, he is. You know why? God's the only one that can give you the answer. He's the only one. How many have woke up in the morning and just Cecil said this morning, I just want to be in church. What is that? That's an answer. That's an answer. What? That's God speaking in my heart, giving me purpose. I love it when I'm in the car and I'm listening to some good Christian music or some preaching. And all of a sudden that Holy Ghost comes on me. I'm just you know, going down the road. Don't worry. I don't go, take the wheel, Jesus. <laughs> I hang on to I keep my eyes open when I'm praying. I'm feeling that power. I'm feeling that anointing. You ever feel that? You ever wake up in the morning going, you're just kind of barely awake and get yourself over there to the prayer room and bend down there and begin to pray. Bam! God starts getting in. You feel a goosebump. That's the God of heaven, the eternal King. You can't to you Jesus. You know why? Because He loves you. You were on His mind this morning while you were laying there sleeping. You got a little fluid coming out of your mouth and stuff in your eye and your hair's all messed up. God's looking down at you. We got people we got to tell about Jesus. Now, I've only used one page of my notes. For long, I try not to preach. God's goal, His purpose, for God so loved the world. He so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. It's important for you to understand there's nothing more important to God than you. He can make a new earth. He can make he can make a new heavens. He can make a new you. God can do anything. Amen. 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 Praise God. All right, I'm used to giving an altar call. We're not doing that. We have subs. I'm thankful for all that God does. I'm thankful for His Word. I'm thankful for you. But friend, we ain't sitting here like a wolf on a dead pickle. We're going to go out and do something for Jesus. We are going to take what we have and what God has done and take it to others so that they can know who He is. There's nothing greater than to see the eyes of somebody that... I remember one time I was talking about the oneness of God and He got His eyes up. He, I, I see it, man. I see it. I see it. He got so excited. There's nothing more exciting than seeing somebody 
get Jesus on the inside. And all of a sudden they come to church and it, there's a glow. There's something brand new. There's something powerful. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. I don't know how to end these things. <laughs> Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for your precious word. I thank you for these beautiful people, God. Thank you for your power and your anointing. God, I pray the rest of this service, Lord, do a work in the hearts of your children. I pray anoint Paul Anderson with your precious spirit, God, that he brings a word, God, that encourages the soul. God, that lifts us up and brings us into the heavenlies. I pray right now an anointing in this house. God, I break the bonds of, of drug addiction, of any kind of addiction. I pray, God, let liberty be spoken into this house. God, bring us into your presence. I pray in Jesus' beautiful name. Amen, amen. Brother Howie. Man, while we've been praying, we need to, uh, we have a couple of prayer requests. Uh, pray for Sister.